thank the organizers for inviting me to this um, event. This is the first time I'm um, coming to Biohub. It's not fun. Um, I have to uh, apologize that actually last night when I uh, uh, was putting my talk together and looking at the list of speakers, I thought I put in the wrong uh, talk. <laughs> so actually, I changed it. <laughs> um, so, um, the, so I was going to tell you about exactly that how connection from molecular interaction to bacteria's uh, growth control program. Uh, but then I noticed a lot of people were talking about spatial temporal dynamics and all that. And um, so I took the theme of a uh, uh, connection between the components to the behavior of a whole, which I believe is the uh, topic of uh, this meeting, uh, <clears throat> what to do once we have a cell atlas. Uh, but I uh, changed the topic uh, to uh, chemotactic bacteria. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, so the subject still, the overall subject is still the same. Uh, so in this case, the whole means a bacterial population, and uh, the parts of the uh, movement of a, a bacteria. Um, <clears throat> but I think the themes uh, that will c come out are also uh, 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 similar. So, the, um, uh, so here's a phenomenon of, uh, of the whole. Uh, so it was known uh, for a long time. So 60 years ago, uh, Julius Adler did this uh, beautiful experiment where he took some chemotactic bacteria, uh, put a drop in the center of a soft agar plate. So then these bacteria can s get into the agar, swim around. And after a while, you notice the formation of a, a ring, we call it a swarm, a swarm ring. And the swarm ring propagates out at a constant speed. Right. <clears throat> now, we know a lot about the parts, and the components. Uh, so bacterial chemotaxis is perhaps the best that characterized molecular system in all of the biology. Uh, so it is uh, uh, very well understood how the molecular interaction, the signaling pathways, uh, uh, generated the behavior of a, a bacteria, a random uh, motion, tum uh, swim and tumbling motion, and uh, how this motion gets modulated by the sensing of a certain chemicals called a chemoattractant, causing eventually bias random walk. All right? And putting these set together, then it's very uh, easy to come up with a picture that uh, perhaps uh, bacteria out there at the ring, uh, they were consuming uh, these attractants, as a nutrient, and uh, then that leads to a self-generated gradient that pushes uh, the bacteria to migrate outward. And uh, the kind of the uh, meta lesson learned of, uh, uh, one gains from this is that maybe these bacteria uh, doing the, uh, do using chemotaxis to do nutrient foraging, to, to, to basically to chase after the nutrient. All right? Now, it, so this I thought was understood for, well, Phenomenon was discovered 60 years ago. It was understood probably for at least 50 year, 40 years, maybe. Right? Uh, but what's to my surprise that uh, two, three years ago, I realized actually there was not really a semi-faithful description of the serene propagation of behavior. Right? And uh, another thing that kind of uh, uh, alerted us uh, to maybe uh, this, uh, the validity of this picture was that if you look at what people call attractants, uh, the potent attractants such as serine and uh, aspartate for E. coli, they are lousy nutrients. Okay, serine, you, you put it into the medium, it even slow down growth. Whereas a good nutrient such as uh, glucose, they're not very good attractants. Okay, so that's something we'll keep in mind uh, later. Uh, but anyway, so let me tell you about uh, so, uh, the sort of historical progress of understanding of this subject. And uh, so soon, a few years after uh, this uh, a phenomenon was described. Uh, Keller and Siegel proposed a beautiful mathematical model, uh, reaction diffusion equations involving uh, diffusing bacteria, because bacteria is randomly uh, tumbling, behaving like a random walker, so described by diffusion with a adduction term, called here uh, uh, the drift, and uh, then <coughs> the, the, the other component is the attractant that's applied it from outside, but then they're being consumed by the uh, bacteria. Uh, the key here is that the drift is um, modulated by the concentration of attractant. At that time, in 1970s, uh, they didn't know what this form was, so they proposed uh, uh, proportional sensing, okay, uh, Weber's law. So uh, senses derivative log of the concentration. <clears throat> All right? And this actually was later shown experimentally to be uh, largely correct for quite a range of concentrations. 
All right, so then together with this, oh, and then there's a coefficient here that describes the strength of this uh, 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 attraction. And actually, as so we call it here, the chemotactic uh, co uh, coefficient chi, it actually has the same uh, unit as a D, because this, uh, this is just one derivative, so so makes it two derivatives, right? And chi over D is a dimensionless ratio describing how much is a bias motion, uh, the biasness of the bias uh, diffusion, okay? All right, so this uh, system can be solved exactly, and here you show showing a numerical uh, solution. Green is the bacterial density, and you have a propagating pulse that's uh, keep on moving, and uh, this uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, the uh, speed can be solved simply by balancing basically the consumption of a, of a, a nutrient from the bacterial point of view and from the population point of view. Basically, the, the speed has to balance the, the uptake of the bacteria of the tract. Okay, so everything is done. So that was sort of the, by 1971, that's a base model of, a, of this propagating ring. There's only one problem uh, with uh, uh, this uh, description. That is, is uh, not, strictly biological. So if you ask for the source of this uh, uh, constant propagation, it is really in the fact that this uh, proportional sensing is taken to be valid for any small uh, attraction, right? So in the limit, the attraction, the attractant concentration goes to zero, can still sense the attractant, and it's infinitely hard pushing on the bacteria at the tail, okay? And that cannot be uh, realistic, right? Uh, so this was actually realized uh, already by uh, Siegel, and uh, some years later, they proposed a modification of this model, where they put a cutoff uh, to this, uh, to lower limit to the to the sense, right? And uh, once that happens, then okay, you can you can. Do, you, there's some analytical work you can do on this. But it's, it's easy to see they fell from a, a numerical uh, simulation. You see that then uh, so. The, so nutrient, the attractant sort of falls in this range, and uh, <coughs> once, the, con once uh, the concentration is low enough, the bacteria no longer have the sense of direction, all right? And they get left behind, okay? So then you have a steady leakage as, as the bacteria uh, propagate, uh, the pulse uh, propagates, and uh, then uh, you can derive, you can make a scaling argument, a scaling argument to show that actually uh, there's quite a significant decline of the uh, propagation uh, speed. All right, so then if you compare to reality, we see actually this leakage is actually realistic, okay? Uh, uh, so I showed you the pictures of, of the propagating uh, swarm ring, but if you come back a day later, you see actually the entire place full with bacteria, okay? So there has to be uh, leakage. On the other hand, uh, if you look at, uh, to remind you that the, the over this time scale, you see that uh, uh, the front propagation is exactly constant, all right? So there's, there's not this kind of a substantial decline of the speed. So uh, how is that? Well, one thing that was left out of the system is growth, okay? So bacteria uh, chase after nutrients not just uh, for fun, but they actually take it and then they grow, right? And so, so a growth term uh, could be added to this equation, and this was actually already done a year after Keller Siegel introduced the model. Right? And it was uh, done also uh, uh, even recently, as recently as just a year or two ago. All right. Um, this, uh, uh, so, so basically then in, in, this, uh, in this model, and then the lambda here is a gross rate. That's given by a uh, mono function of the food. Here's the attractant. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, yeah, so there's a relation between, a, a, a constraint between uh, the, the food and the <coughs> and the bacteria by the uh, yield. All right, so i uh, show another simulation of this uh, uh, process. So in this case, then you do get a steady uh, propagating uh, system. It is not quite a pulse. You can hardly, it's maybe a little uh, blip for some uh, parameter combination, but it's really a front that's uh, propagating, okay? Uh, the, okay, so the problem is that expansion speed is a, much too small uh, compared to uh, realistic values, and uh, and as you can see from the solution, that uh, it doesn't it doesn't generate a pulse for you. <clears throat> All right, so 
then uh, at this, so, so uh, I'll describe at the end how we got interested in this problem. But anyway, we, we look at this, so we, we thought well, we wanted to know actually what, what's going on in this. And uh, modern days, uh, fo uh, confocal microscope is fast enough, you can just basically look at the propagating pulse and identify individual bacteria and see how they're actually moving through, okay? So we took a look into uh, what's going on. <coughs> and um, so what we saw. So uh, in a system that uh, uh, was uh, compatible uh, with the, the, uh, the assumption of this model, so, we, uh, so if you grow bacteria in a glucose plate where glucose is attracting and the food, you actually do get this kind of a, a behavior, just a friend that's uh, propagating, and get a very slow speed. Okay. Uh, this is a speed that's quite a bit slower compared to the type of uh, experiment that Adler was doing uh, 60 years ago. Uh, basically, what he did was, uh, the only difference is that he put a drop in a rich medium, where it has all kinds of uh, stuff. And uh, so this is uh, what uh, uh, Jonas uh, Kramer, the postdoc who uh, uh, spearheaded this uh, uh, study, saw uh, from, uh, from the microscope that there is actually, so this is the uh, density profiles uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of this, so if you take a, a cross-section look at the count cells, then you get a exponentially uh, uh, de uh, uh, dependent the density profile with a little blip at the end. And it's that little bump here that's actually visually seen as a, uh, as a ring, okay? And it's uh, probably not surprising. If you want to take a picture, you want to focus on something, and then, then you focus on the ring. Okay? It seems, uh, that seems to be the impression that's conveyed by the, by the picture, but actually there's an entire continuum exponential profile that's pulled out by the ring. Okay, um, <clears throat> so what's the difference? So we, if you look into the composition of a medium, so in rich medium could be anything, but often you have a whole suite of amino acid, right? And if you look at the composition of a, uh, with this particular medium, but the, the similar, uh, the nominal as, uh, attractants, aspartate and the serin, they're the minor component of the entire thing, okay? maybe. Uh, so, so the medium gets all kinds of stuff that cell can use to uh, take for growth, uh, but uh, often a few components they can also, also respond to uh, for, <coughs> for, move, for guiding the movement. All right, so that led us to ask, you know, is it really uh, true? How serious we should take this notion that attractants is the nutrient, right? So that's why, why these bacteria are swimming against. People think it's uh, because they're chasing after food. Okay? It doesn't look like this food. Um, <clears throat> right, and then, the, and then the thing, if it's not, then what is it that accounts for a much faster expansion when, when, with this rich medium? Right. <clears throat> so then we decided to uh, make another, uh, just a trivial extension of this model. So then we put in nutrient as nutrient that supports cell growth and attractant that guides uh, motion. So separate the role of attractant and the nutrient. All right. So then we just add one more. Uh, so neutrons to neutron, but N is not A. So there are two uh, equations, similar equations for, for growth and for, uh, <coughs> uh, for uh, uh, shaping the attraction. All right. Um, <coughs> all right. And the neutron attractants just follow simple diffusion. So now if you run a simulation of this system, now we get something that's very similar uh, to the observed uh, behavior. We see, uh, so the green again is the bacterial density. We see a peak followed by a uh, exponential shaped uh, uh, density profile, okay? And the peak is uh, propagating in a constant speed. Um, <clears throat> okay, so yeah, we see a, a, a steady profile that's uh, co-moving uh, with, the, with the front. And uh, so here is a test that instead of uh, uh, some uh, uh, rich mixed medium, if we just have a simple medium uh, with, uh, with aspartate being the attractant and glycerol mimicking the main food source, and glycerol is known to be a non-attractant, we basically get the same behavior, the same type of uh, uh, profile, uh, except that with uh, this rich medium, uh, it is expanding faster. Okay, so. So maybe this suggests that there's a growth rate dependence uh, to this uh, expansion speed. And faster, ex faster the growth, faster the expansion. Again, not obvious if you think about this as a, a nutrient foraging strategy. Right? In nutrient foraging, if you have lots of food, you just sit around, you don't want to do this, spend energy to, to move. 
All right, so what, what is happening, uh, the physics or the biology of the underlying process is quite simple. Uh, so attractant gradient is consumed by this uh, uh, front here, and so you only, only the bacteria at the front are chemotactic, and they're moving. Imagine, and the ones at the back are not moving, right? Imagine these guys, only these guys are moving, and sometime later this, these guys will be here, and they will be growing as well, okay? And you will have a sort of a depleted region behind the foot, right? But then that is balanced by the diffusion because the cells in there are randomly moving, and once in a while they get out of the zone where there's a, a strong attractant profile. Okay, so it's in this way to keep a steady uh, propagation of the front. And here's a more uh, a sort of a biologist cartoon picture of this. You basically have a small group of, uh, if you want to use a word, uh, uh, pioneers, which are really chasing after the uh, chasing after the uh, the gradient. And then they leave behind settlers with, whose only job is just to grow. They're not moving anywhere. Okay, so it's a passing on of a settlers, a, a, a pioneers, and the settlements <coughs> uh, to to uh, take the uh, properties that they they travel. Um, <coughs> then from this picture, we can make a simple scaling argument to understand about the basic uh, quantitatively the, the relations of uh, what determines the speed. So we have a density peak with a certain width. So, the, so you can, from that, you can get a number of uh, uh, cells in this peak. And uh, <coughs> you have the growth of these cells by the growth rate. And then there is a diffusion flux. These two have to balance. So, so the backward diffusion balances the growth. And that together, give you a, a measure of the uh, uh, width, how the, that scales with the growth rate and diffusion constant. Then further, uh, from Weber's law of proportional sensing, so certainly the cells in here are uh, subject to uh, Weber's law. Uh, so, so the drift speed is a derivative of log. Okay? So in terms of dimension, then the speed is just the chemotactic coefficient divided by the length scale. Okay? And we put it together, we'll obtain a propagation speed, which is uh, just like uh, the uh, Fisher wave. So if there's no chemotaxis, it's just Fisher wave, square root of a growth rate times the diffusion, right? And in this case, the Fisher wave speed is expanded by this dimensional factors, which tells you how much uh, cells are uh, chemotactically uh, biased. All right, so uh, this is a scaling argument. We can first uh, uh, check that uh, numerically, that indeed, well, well first of all, it's, I should say it's difficult to solve this equation exactly, right? It's a mixture of a uh, of, uh, Keller Siegel uh, propagation fund and the uh, Fisher Como Grove type of uh, things going on the back, okay? Um, <clears throat> so we use this as scaling arguments, but then uh, numerics uh, seem to confirm at least these uh, predictions of the scaling argument, <coughs> square root uh, time dependence. Uh, and uh, the, so here is actually, this is the data of a comparing uh, the two expansion with chemotaxis and without chemotaxis. So this would just be the, what we usually call the fisher Komogorov uh, wave, and this would be this type of one with growth. And uh, so from this type of uh, thing, can, uh, so we devised a system where we can actually tune the, for the same uh, system with same nutrient, we can tweak the growth rate uh, of the population. And you see that there's a, uh, the propagation speed has a nonlinear, uh, sublinear dependence on the growth rate. And uh, actually, if you square this, you see that it's a linear dependence. Square has a linear dependent growth rate. So verifying this uh, <coughs> relation. All right. So, so to, to summarize this, uh, so this is a, a behavior. We have a, uh, we have a pulse of a, a cells that's at the front. Uh, that, that is uh, setting the speed and uh, uh, planting the seeds for the later, much later sort of a pop, uh, taking colonization of the, of the uh, real estate that they traveled uh, quickly through. And uh, so, so the concept of attractant, right, instead of uh, what commonly thought of uh, as a food item, it's uh, uh, really not. If you have to drink coffee like the way you, uh, uh, Asians take rice, then you'll be in trouble. <laughs> um, uh, but then uh, the, and the other thing is that uh, expansion is happening well before nutrients run out. So this brown curve here is a nutrient. Okay, attractant runs out very quickly, so you have a lower, it's a combination of low level of attractant, high level of nutrient that uh, sustain this type of uh, uh, propagation effects, right? Um, <clears throat> so not a starvation response, the, the program to actually, the, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, take off. Uh, well bef uh, before starvation. 
and you can say that the starvation response will be uh, if you're really out of business, then you start to look for other things to do, right? It'll be too late for the population. Instead, what these guys seem to be doing, right? If you see that we have a faster uh, expansion and the, uh, the better growth situation. So it's more like when a company is uh, doing well, then they're doing all kinds of diversification, trying to, uh, to try to uh, test different type of market, right? <laughs> and uh, it is uh, probably always uh, underlying knowledge that nothing can sustain exponential growth forever. So while you're enjoying, you already start to diversify. All right. So. Uh, yeah, so all together, the chemotaxis then is seen here as a four-sided strategy, that is before neutron right now, to, to diversify. And uh, so this paper uh, is go actually going to come out either later this week or next week uh, in Nature. Uh, Jonas Kramer, uh, physics postdoc, and uh, Tomo Honda, a biology student, are the uh, lead authors of the study. And we benefit a lot from my colleague uh, Massimo Vegasola, who was most in important uh, to us early on when told us there are a lot that's not known about chemotaxis. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll never have gone into a chemotaxis study. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Thanks, Terry, for a great talk. Um, I have a question about these, the scaling argument. It looks like the settlers, they cannot really influence the foot of this traveling wave. They're already, they've lost the race. And, but then from the scaling argument, I don't see why the, the speed that you get, you only get because you, because you assume the Q is decoupled from the growth medium. It looks like you could make the same scaling argument even if the Q is equal to the food you use to grow. So c can you show me what in the scaling argument is specific to the separation of Q and Q, uh, I mean the, the attractants. Yes, yes. Okay. Attractant so so medium. so the okay so 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 in in this in this argument so Okay, so the cells are, okay, so, so the, the underlying, so we're in a moving phase. So the cues are what sustain the, 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 the group to move, right? Then on top of that moving, there's a growth and there's, a, there's a diffusion. So I guess attraction is important in that, in, in that is a, the, the, there's an exit, exit phase. Ah, and yeah, yeah. So if you grow on the attractant, okay. So 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 this is a really a matter of a of a scale. I mean that that was a, so so before I was studied. So people. So I showed you this model where attractant and food are the same thing. Okay. So when attractant and food are the same thing, you have a you have a big uh, constraint. That is uh, the gradient. What that's that's uh, the self senses for movement. Is uh, okay. You you cannot. You, no, if you have lots of concentration, uh, of a very high concentration as as you need for food, then it takes a long time to dig a gradient. So it's it's really a matter of a, of, of of scale. Okay. So if you have millimolar worth of stuff, you just take lots of cell to dig a lot to move a little bit. All right. And uh, so with a little so 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 the, the, this uh, by separating the role of attraction and the, and, and the nutrient. Right, then, then this uh, basically it's it's a matter of scale. There's a little a, a few cells in the, at the front can already take care of the, uh, the attractants and they can start moving. Okay, and uh, this separation of scale is reflected in that. Okay, the speed can be very fast, but for a long time the, you do not see anything in the back because you just the, the density is very low at the back and take them a long time to grow up. That was why initially, if you look at, a, at the photograph, you, you, everybody thought there was a ring. Everybody tried to explain the ring. So all kinds of uh, exotic uh, uh, strategy were proposed how to make a ring, right? Despite the leakage on the back, because, but there was never a ring, which is difficult to see. Because that's separation of scale. The simulation shows, shows a ring, actually, even if yeah. So simulation shows. Well, you, you can see it uh, uh, here. Eh? Ah, so if uh, uh, if the if, if the attractant is the medium, it, it, it's basically flat. So depend on depend on details. Sometimes you see a little blip, but it's basically a flat profile. You do not get the ring. Yeah, but it's that contrast of the blip and, and the background that that's really make this uh, scheme work robustly. Who's next? 
So uh, I, I had a question. So how does this work in the context where the attractant is a source? And so it's actually, there's additional input maintaining a gradient here. Do you end up with a ring in the steady state? A source? Yes. Uh, what, what, what kind of source laid down by somebody else? Yeah, so if there's something uh, kind of emitting, like I mean, uh, like a heat source, as opposed to being continually consumed and used up, it's also ah, if it's way. a constant uh, thing, yeah. So, so that would be a di uh, uh, yeah. So, so bacteria do respond to uh, to the, the, but that would be fixed. You cannot modify the uh, the environment, right? So, so this would be a different uh, type of uh, behavior, right? Okay. Is it is it universal that the best attractants are bad nutrients? Or is that just a feature of the E. coli that everybody? This studies? is a feature of E. coli, and we've seen marine bacteria. There, you know, there were there were attractants that that they don't even consume. I mean, they don't they don't benefit at all uh, as a, as a nutrient. And uh, actually, if the opposite, do, do we see good nutrients that are good attracting? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm not aware of a clear example of that. Now, glucose does is a weak attractant, and obviously it's a good source. But I do not see like an obvious good attractant is also a good uh, uh, food source. Let's thank Terry again. Okay.